Namo Amitabha Buddha. Hello everyone. So today I feel like sharing the incredible rebirth case of monk Zhixing or master Zhixing. So this is a really well known rebirth case and a lot of people before they did not believe in Amitabha Buddha but after hearing monk Zhixing's rebirth case a lot of people do believe in Amitabha Buddha because there were really a lot of eyewitnesses. Also a famous photo when he saw rebirth which I'll also show in this video. So in the West, a lot of people might have heard of Master Xuanhua, the famous Chan master who brought Chinese Mahayana Buddhism to the West. And Master Xuanhua's teacher was actually Master Xu Yun, an incredible Chan master in China who was the successor of five different Chan schools, who lived for 120 years and he was really an iconic Chan master in the recent time. And Monk Zhixing was also the disciple of Master Xu Yun. So in the year 1907, there was a young man called Abian. So before Monk Zhixing took the monastic life, his name was called Abian. He came from Yunnan province and he was really poor. His parents died since he was a kid and he could not find a job. He was uneducated but he had two kids, however, he could not feed the family. So Abian came to the temple and asked if he could help out and they accepted him in the temple. So he started just working with all the people in the temple. He was a hard worker and he would do all kinds of work such as gardening, carrying stones and build houses. So he worked from day to night and didn't take any breaks. He also didn't talk much at all. When other people talked to him, he couldn't really hear well as his hearing was not good. So other people thought he was deaf and he didn't really care so much. So at that time, he was just 20 years old. And after a month, all his family also came to the temple and they wanted to stay in the temple, which included his wife, his kids, his brother, his sister, all the eight people from the family. Initially, the temple did not want to accept them because they were women and women were not allowed to stay in the men's only temple. But Abian said they really had nowhere to go. They had nowhere to live. And eventually, Master Xu Yun agreed to allow them to stay and they could live in the hut on the mountain behind the temple. And after two years, Abian really wanted to become a monk so he told Master Xu Yun but he said he couldn't read, he didn't know any words. He really wanted to also practice with other monks and Master Xu Yun said then all you need to do is to recite Amitabha. Just keep reciting Amitabha one heartedly no matter what you do and you will be able to seek rebirth to the western pure land of ultimate bliss. So Master Xu Yun Apart from teaching the Chan methods, he also taught about Nian Fo. So this is common in China as I talked about before. In almost all the Chan schools in China, they also practice the Pure Land method. They also recite Amitabha to seek rebirth to the Pure Land. Just in case if one cannot rely on Samadhi in this lifetime, one can always rely on the power of Amitabha Buddha and seek rebirth to the Pure Land. And it was the same with Master Xuanhua. Master Xuanhua also taught about Nian Fu. He spoke about this Nian Fu method highly. And not only Monk Zhixin became a monk later, all the eight people from his family, so everybody all took monastic life with him. And after that, he became Monk Zhixin, but his life was pretty much the same like before. He would wake up before everybody woke up and he he would do all the dirty work, all the hard work in the temple, and he would always recite Amitabha no matter what he did all the time from day to night. And after a few years, Master Xu Yun knew that Monk Zhixing had really cultivated quite well, but he thought he should probably go out and see more. So he told Monk Zhixin to go out to visit all the great temples, to visit all the great teachers so he could receive more knowledge from them. So Monk Zhixin at the beginning he didn't want to leave Master Xu Yun but he obeyed 
his teacher's order, and he left the temple. So after five years, Master Xuyun was again building another temple, and Mount Zhixing heard about this news, and he came back. Master Xuyun was very surprised to see him and ask him what did he learn after going out for so long. And he said nothing, it was just the same. And Master Xuyun asked, what do you plan to do when you came back? And he said, I just wanted to serve you to help out with any work I can help out. So again, he started to work in the temple day and night. He would just do any kind of work in the temple. And of course, he was also always near for. So before, Mang Zhixing could not even read any words. He could not read any sutras. But after he came back, he could recite sutras. And not only that, he would bow at the sutras. After he recite, he would do Buddha prostration every day. So at that time, the temple was building a tower, a relics tower. And he asked Master Xuyin if he could help guard this tower. So Master Xuyun actually understood what he meant. So Master Xuyun knew that he was gonna seek rebirth soon. And there was a ceremony for monastic precepts and Master Xuyun invited Monk Zhixing to come and give a speech because Master Xuyun knew that he has cultivated quite well despite he spoke very little. So Monk Zhixing just said simply, I didn't know anything, I only know how to recite Amitofo. And one night he came into Master Xuyun's room and he told Master Xuyun that now it's time for me to leave. And Master Xuyun knew what he meant and Master Xuyun said, okay, you go and do what you have to do. I will also be here to help you. And on that evening, people could not find him. But then later, people saw great white light shooting into the sky from the back garden. The villagers who lived nearby, when they saw this, they thought it was on fire because the bright white light really light up the whole sky. And they immediately went into the backyard and saw Monk Zhixing was actually sitting in meditation with his monastic robe. He looked as if he was still alive. And Master Xuyun quickly also came over to the back garden and told people not to touch Master Zhixing because Master Xuyun knew that Master Zhixing had already sought rebirth to the Pure Land, but he still kept this body to be here just for other people to witness his rebirth. This was really incredible. Master Xuyun also said if anybody touch him, the whole of the body would just collapse into ashes because he had already used the fire from Samadhi to burn himself. So there was no need for cremation, he had already done it. If one watched carefully, one would realize that his shoes and the straws he was sitting on they had all been burned and turned into ashes. However, his whole body and the rope still remain intact. And he also had a smile on his face as if he was still alive, as if he was just still meditating. This was rare even through all the reverse cases we had seen. And Master Xuyun also said when he was in his room chanting the sutra and also trying to assist, he could feel that his whole body was burning and he knew that Master Zhixing had already succeeded and sought rebirth to the Pure Land. And the next day they contacted all the biggest media in the local province to come and report this case. So there were lots of eyewitnesses. And not only that, all the government officials, they all came and they could not believe that Master Zhixing had actually left his body and already sought rebirth to the Pure Land. They could not believe that he had actually burned himself with the fire of Samadhi, but somehow his body was still intact as if he was just meditating. After everybody had witnessed Master Zhixing's rebirth and after all the photos had been taken, Master Xuyun told Master Zhixing that we are so grateful for you, Master Zhixing. Thank you for your performance. And now you can leave. And after what Master Xuyun said, he rang the bell for three times near his ear. Master Zhixing's body just started to shake and immediately the whole body collapsed into ashes. So everyone was absolutely in awe of this and Master Xuyun also bowed and Master Zhixing admitted that 
Master Zhixing had really surpassed him. This was what Master Xu Yun said. So were the thousand people there who were witnessing this incredible incident. Everybody revered to Master Zhixing. And after that, a lot of people started to kneel for and to believe in Amitabha Buddha and the Pure Land because this was really like a breaking news in the whole of the China at that time. So this is really an incredible reverse case because Master Zhu Xin did not know any words, he did not know anything, but he just recited Amitabha day and night and he could realize a high level of Samadhi because of that even surpass his teacher who was a great Chan master. So we can really see that the Nian Fu practice is really the other power method. When we recite the name of Amitabha, we will really receive great help, great assistance of Amitabha because of Amitabha's great vows. And maybe we can also strive to achieve Nian Fu Samadhi in this life. Of course, it's not necessary for us to realize Nian Fu Samadhi in order to seek rebirth, but Nevertheless, this is a great attempt and we have really seen uh, Master Zhu Xing how he has shown us just by practicing Nian Fu single-mindedly, one-heartedly for many many years, for over 20 plus years and one could realize the state of Samadhi and this was also the same with Master Hai Xian and also other masters and including lay Buddhists and it's also possible for one to realize Nian Fu Samadhi in one lifetime if one is really diligent in one's cultivation. So I found this extremely inspiring and also touching and I trust all of us can learn something from Master Zhu Xing. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha.